This is a video on the main points from the first part of the book, $100 million Offers by Alex Hormozzi. I've summarized the whole entire book down to the most important information, but there's still absolutely loads of information. Like just look at all the tags that I got from it. There's literally about 30 tags there. And so I got all the main points, put it all in my notes, and then I'm splitting it up into separate videos. So this is the first part and subscribe for all the other parts because whether you want to grow your business, start a business, make more money, even if you've got just like Airbnbs or an Airbnb, this is gonna show you how to like make your offer like compelling and stand out compared to everyone else's boring offers that are all just copying the same thing. And like it says in the book, everyone's on a fight to the bottom because everyone's trying to have the cheapest instead of the best. So subscribe so you don't miss the other parts. So the book starts with the whole backstory of Alex Hormozzi and his wife. And he's he started in gym launch. He's had a few business failures, but anyway, there's a whole introduction, there's a whole part on him, and there's a load of different stories about him in the book. But again, this is just the main points, which so that, that isn't, it's important, but it's not important for this video. So if you're wanting to read the whole book, then you can. It's in the description so you can get to it easily. And then a quick one, last thing before I start, there's some raw information here, quite a lot. So I'll be like looking down because it's like straight up reading. So I'll have to read it word for word. And also because it's raw information, if you're actually trying to improve business or whatever, then you should probably get pen and paper because there's so much raw information that you're going to want to take notes on the things you think are like interesting or might help you. Now, the first part that I picked out, this was the first thing in the book. It was a quote, make people an offer so good they would feel stupid saying no. So that's just how you make an offer. It's not just about making the most average or random offer. You've properly, as it talks in this book on how to do it, there's so much to an offer than just putting up what it is you're offering and saying here it is. You've got to properly package it, have, I guess, guarantees and names. There's so much to it if you want to be perfect. And that's why him, he's got a business called acquisition.com and he helps business owners like make way more money. And he's got loads of different figures and how he's helped people. And he's big on YouTube, big in business. That's like the backstory of Alex Tomazzi. Look, look him up on YouTube. He talks so much information on business and he literally just pulls up to companies what he first did with gym launch stuff and started just pretty much telling them how to make more money and then taking the first lot of profit they make so he never charged them he'd just pull up he'd get them loads of customers and then he'd take however much money like i think end up in like 50 grand a month and then just get out and then what actually is an offer the only way to conduct business is through a value exchange a trade of dollars for values it's always about value the offer is what initiates this trade. In a nutshell, the offer is the goods and services you agree to give or provide, how you accept payment and the terms of the agreement. It is what begins the process of getting customers and making money. It is the first thing any new customer will interact with in your business. Since the offer is what attracts new customers, it is the lifeblood of your business. No offer, no business, no life. Bad offer, negative profit, no business, miserable life. Decent offer, no profit, stagnating business, stagnating life. Good offer, some profit, okay business, okay life. Grand slam offer, fantastic profit, insane business, freedom. Now, the two main problems most entrepreneurs face and how this book solves them. Although you can make the list of problems you face a mile long, which is a great way to stress yourself out, all these problems typically start from two big kahunas. Not enough clients, not enough cash, so excess profit at the end of the month seems obvious, but it costs more money and time to get more clients, thereby solving issue one. And that money is coming from the profit margins, which creates problem two. What's more annoying, prospects savagely compare and belittle our services in favour of cheaper and crappier alternatives with the cheapest one winning. This, of course, when winning, means getting to work more for even less. Sad face. Let's say you've slashed prices to get more customers. You may even have a full client load, but here you are, barely making it because profit margins are too thin. Competition becomes a race to the bottom. So this is a fact that is obvious in a lot of business is everyone just competing on the cheapest price instead of the best offer, as I said earlier. So it, there's a massive issue because everyone just getting smaller and smaller profit margins instead of, like I said, having a better product and charging more, well, or better service, whatever, and then charging more for it because 
it's premium, yours is best. Then says, so then what does it take to grow? Thankfully, just three simple things. Get more customers, increase their average purchase value, and get them to buy more times, that's it. Sure, there are lots of ways to acquire customers and zillions of ways to increase order value and purchase frequency, but simply put, that's it. Those are the only three ways to grow. Example, if I sell 10 clients a month and a client is worth $1,000 to me over their lifetime through average cart value times average number of purchases, then my business will cap at 10,000 a month, 10 times 1,000. 10 new clients a month times $1,000 lifetime value equals 10,000 a month max revenue. If you want to grow, you've got to either sell more clients every month while maintaining suitable margins or have them be worth more by increasing the profit per purchase or number of times they buy. That's it. Author note, only two ways to grow. To simplify this concept even more, there are really only two ways to grow. Get more customers and increase each customer's value. Increasing each customer's value has two sub buckets. One, increasing profit per purchase. Two, increase the number of times they buy. For the purpose of this book, I highlight both of those sub buckets as individual growth paths. I did this because I think it will be easier to understand the money models that will come in volume three. All three, getting more customers, increasing their average purchase value and getting them to buy more are repeated themes in this book. But if you seek simplicity, both increasing average purchase value and increasing the number of times a customer buys results in one outcome, increasing each customer's value. Business terms. Before going any further, and to better flesh out the concepts that follow, we should take a second to define and better understand some key business concepts. When I stood in that Las Vegas penthouse in my beast mode t-shirt, I was clueless about such terms. Let me help you better than, well, me. So, bit of context. He went to a little business meeting where he paid like 5,000 or something or 2,000 and it was with all these millionaires and he was like earning like 10 grand a month or something but these one of the people that were there said that they earned a million in that year and he was like oh my gosh a million but there was all talk in these different words and names and like shortened things like LIV, LTV and stuff and he had no idea what they were so here's the context that he needed at the time. Gross profit, the revenue minus the direct cost of service, an additional customer. If I sell lotion for $10 and it costs me $2, my gross profit is $8 or 80%. If I sell agency services for 1,000 a month and it costs me 100 a month in labor to run that client's advertising, then my gross profit is $900 or 90%. No, this is not net profit. Net profit is what's left over after all expenses are paid, not just the direct costs of fulfillment. Lifetime value, the gross profit accrued over the entire lifetime of a customer. This is growth profit multiplied by the number of purchases an average customer will make over their lifetime. Using the example above, if the average customer stays five months and they pay 1,000 a month, while it costs me over $100 per month to fulfill, then their lifetime value is $4,500. Here's the breakdown. Revenue, $1,000 a month, 9% gross margin, five months equals $4,500 lifetime value, LIV. Note that the indirect costs like admin, software, run, etc. are not included in LTV. Note, you will find different definitions for lifetime value depending on the source. The biggest difference is that some sources only count total revenue, while others focus on gross profit over the lifespan. I focus on gross profit. You may also see me refer to this as LTGP, Lifetime Gross Profit, in other texts for clarity's sake. Value Driven versus Price Driven Purchases. This book was intended to be a textbook for any business that wants to grow. I've spent and continue to spend hundreds of hours on calls and in-person meetings consulting entrepreneurs on crafting their offers. I have seen the ones that take off into the stratosphere and those that fizzle. Having a grand slam offer makes it almost impossible to lose, but why? What gives it such an impact? In short, 
having a Grand Slam offer helps with all three of the requirements for growth. Getting more customers, getting them to pay more, and getting them to do so more times. How? It allows you to differentiate yourself from the marketplace. In other words, it allows you to sell your product based on value, not on price, as I said earlier. Commoditized equals price-driven purchases, race to the bottom. Differentiated, value-driven purchases, sell in a category of one with no comparisons. Yes, market matters, which I will expand on in the next chapter. So a quick bit of information on what I, how I want to link to this is how this works with social media and other things about how authenticity, instead of competing on niches, if you're authentic and be yourself, no one can compete with you on being you. So that's how that links to like social media and things. He further went on to say, a commodity as I define it is a product available from many places. For that reason, it's prone to purchases based on price instead of value. If all products are equal, then the cheapest one is most valuable by default. In other words, if, if a prospect compares your product to another and thinks these are pretty much the same, I'll buy the cheaper one. Then they commoditized you. How embarrassing. But really, it's one of the worst experiences a value-driven entrepreneur can have. This is a massive problem for the entrepreneur because commodities are valued at the point of market efficiency. This means that the marketplace drives the price down through competition until the margins are just enough to keep the lights on, just enough to become a slave to their business. The business makes just enough to justify the owner waiting anxiously for things to turn around, and by the time that lie is released, they are in too deep to pivot, at least until now. A grand slam offer solves this problem. And then another thing I can link to this on how he was saying that if your two things are the same, then people go for cheaper. How this kind of links is that there's people that like leverage if you become well known like alex or mozzie then people will pay stupid amounts for either you to speak or for whatever you sell because you're well known like look at people that grow on youtube and then open a makeup brand for example they can charge absolute stupid amounts and the followers will buy it just because it's them and because they know them Whereas there'll be someone that makes way better makeup, possibly, but doesn't get as many sales and doesn't charge as much or can't charge as much and has to have a cheaper product. But what does a Grand Slam offer do? Alright, let's start by defining a Grand Slam offer. It's an offer you present to the marketplace that cannot be compared to any other product or service available. Combining an attractive promotion and unmatched value proposition, a premium price, and an unbeatable guarantee with a money model payment terms that allows you to get paid to get new customers forever removing the cash constraint on business growth in other words it allows you to sell in a category of one or to apply another great phrase to sell in a vacuum the resulting purchasing decision for the prospect is now between your product and nothing so you can sell at whatever price you get the prospect to perceive not in comparison to anything else. As a result, it gets you more customers at higher ticket prices for less money. If you like fancy marketing terms, it breaks down like this. Increased response rates, think clicks. Increased conversions, think sales. Premium prices, think charging a lot of money. Having a Grand Slam offer increases your response rates to advertisements, aka more people will click or take an action on an advertisement they see containing a Grand Slam offer. So if you pay for the same amount of eyeballs, but one, more people respond, two, more of those responses buy, and three, they buy for higher prices, then your business grows. I've struck gold on my share of offers, not because I've got some superpower, because I've just done this a lot of times and failed even more. I've sorted through the crap that chronically fails and pocketed all the stuff that reproducibly succeeds and put it in this book. Here's the key takeaway from all this. A business does the same work in both cases with a commoditized or a Grand Slam offer. The fulfillment is the same but if one business uses Grand Slam offer and another uses a commodity offer the Grand Slam offer makes that business appear as if it has totally different products and that means a value-driven versus price-driven purchase. If you have a commodity offer, you will compete on price, having a price-driven purchase versus a value-driven purchase. 
Your Grand Slam offer, however, forces a prospect to stop and think differently to assess the value of your differentiated product. Doing this establishes you as your own category, which means it's too difficult to compare prices, which means you recalibrate the prospect's value meter. So this on screen is the old commoditized way, so the price driven race to the bottom. Breakdown. At five to one return on advertising spend, you lose money getting customers, but in 30 days, those five customers will pay another 1,000 each, bringing you to 10,000 in total and break even. The next month, the 5,000 that comes in would be your first profitable month and each month thereafter would be profitable, assuming they all stay. This is an example of a commoditized service, normal agency work. There's a million of them and they all look the same. Commoditized businesses and offers have a harder time getting responses from ads because all their marketing looks the same as everyone else's. No, it all looks the same because they are all making the same offer. You pay us to work, we do work. Maybe you get the results from that work, maybe you don't. It's reasonable, but it's easily duplicated and subject to commoditization. This commoditization creates a price-driven purchase. And as a result, you are forced to be priced competitively to get to clients and to stay that way to keep them. If the client sees a cheaper version of the same thing, then the value discrepancy will cause them to swap providers. This is a dilemma. Lose this client, the rest of your clients and potential clients, or stay competitive. Your margins become so thin they vanish. Furthermore, it's hard to get prospects to say yes and to keep them saying yes, unless you're hyper vigilant about clients commoditizing your business by staying competitive. And that's the problem with the old commoditized way. They're able to compare. Unless you switch to a grand slam offer, your prices will keep getting beaten down. The business eventually dies. All the entrepreneur throws in the towel. No bueno. We want to make an offer that's so different that you can skip the awkward explanation of why your product is different from everyone else's. Which, if they have to ask, then they are probably too ignorant to understand the explanation. And instead, just have the offer do that to work for you. That's the Grand Slam offer way. Let's dive in to see the contrast in sales numbers. So the new Grand Slam offer, way, differentiated, incomparable, value driven. Grand Slam offers pay one time, no recurring fee, no retainer, just cover ad spend. I'll generate leads and work your leads for you and only pay me if people show up. And I'll guarantee you get 20 people in your first month or you get your next month free. P.S. I'll also provide all the best practices from the other businesses like yours. Daily sales coaching for your staff, tested scripts, test, tested price points and offers to swipe and deploy, sales recordings and everything else you need to sell and fulfill your customers. I'll give you the entire playbook for insert industry. Absolutely free, just for becoming a client. In a nutshell, I'm feeding people into your business, showing you exactly how to sell them so that you can get the highest prices, which means that you make the most money possible. Sound fair enough? So that's like the kind of script for the offer kind of thing. It's clear that these are drastically different offers, but so what? Where's the money? Let's compare both in the below chart. So now this is the chart of the Grand Slam offer compared to the commodity. So you can again, just pause if you want. Breakdown, you spend the same amount of money for the same eyeballs, then you get 2.5 times more people to respond to your advertisement because it's a more compelling offer. From there, you close 2.5 times as many people because the offer is so much more compelling. From there, you are able to charge a four times higher price upfront. The end result is 2.5 times 2.5 times four equals 22.4 times more cash collected up front. Yes, you spent 10,000 to make 112,000. You just made money getting new customers. Comparison, remember the old way, the way you lost half the ad spend up front. With the new way, you're making more money and getting more customers. This means that your cost to acquire customers is so cheap relative to how much you make that your limiting factor becomes your ability to do the work you already love doing. Cash flow and acquiring customers is no longer your bottleneck because it's 22.4 times more profitable than the old model. Yup, you read that right. This is the part in the action movie where you walk away from the explosion in slow motion. This is the exact Grand Slam offer 
we used with our software business that serves agencies, the numbers can become wild fast. I know 22.4 times better sounds unreasonable, but that's the point. If you play the same game everyone else does, you'll get the same results. Everyone else does mediocre. You hit singles and doubles, keep the lights on, but never get ahead. But remember, the opening passage of this book, that when you align all the prices, you can knock it out of the park so well that you win for good. And then a slight little bit of backstory from him says that in my first 18 months in business, we went from $500,000 a year to 28 million a year off of less than 1 million in ad spend. So when I say 20 to one and 50 to one, 100 to one returns, I mean it. When you get this right, the results are, well, unbelievable. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next parts. If the next part to the whole $100 million offers book summaries is out, then it'll be on screen now. But otherwise, you're obviously interested in business, so you will like this video on screen now. That is a guide to wealth from the wisdom of Naval Revikin. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.